Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out my channel. Today we're working on a 99 Honda Civic and I have a problem with it. Whenever it gets warm, it stalls and it doesn't do it consistently. It runs real well for a while and then it stalls and it's funny because if you pump the gas, it will actually catch itself and it's like the computer decides to ignore a bad sensor and it'll run just fine as long as you don't turn the key off it won't stall. So we've been dealing with this problem for a little while. We replaced the fuel filter, we checked the fuel pressures. I didn't think necessarily that was going to cure it, but we did need to replace the fuel filter because we bought the car used. We didn't know how long ago it had been changed. And also we replaced the EGR valve. Whenever we replaced the EGR valve, it seemed to help to some extent, but again, it showed up and it's doing the same thing again to where once it gets warm, it wants to stall. Every time this happens, we pop a code, even though the codes have been cleared, and it's a cylinder position sensor. Now that's inside the distributor, and the distributor, we needed to change the cap and rotor. A lot of them come with a new cap and rotor whenever you buy a new distributor. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna replace the whole distributor and fix this problem once and for all. So let's go ahead and jump into it and I'll point out how it's done. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is disconnect the battery, obviously. Uh, what I'm gonna do is disconnect the ground first. That way uh, we don't have any chance of touching the positive and a ground on the chassis. Let's go ahead and do that terminal comes loose you can see there make sure you bend it out of the way and then what I'm going to do whenever I disconnect these two terminals is I'm going to touch them together and I'll show you what I mean here now that I have these two terminals loose what I'm going to do to clear the computer codes is just hold them together you can see here there's no sparks nothing crazy I'm just going to hold them together for about mm, 10 seconds and that way the computer gets the codes cleared out right away. That way you're not disconnecting and, and leaving them set for who knows how long. Now that we've addressed the battery, let's go ahead and go right to the distributor. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is pull this plug off of its retainer. There's a button in the back to pull out a little bit, and when you're pulling it out, go ahead and just wiggle the plug off of its strainer, off of the bracket that it's mounted to. So let's go ahead and pull that out and wiggle this off just like that then there's this tab here which you depress and when you're depressing it just pull the plug apart now that this is off I want to draw your attention to this plug this plug is what they call an 8 pin plug now there's other ones and they have other pins obviously more than 8 and they're shaped differently you have to make sure your plug looks like this on the distributor that you buy so I'm gonna put the link down below and the links gonna take you right to the distributor that we're using for this vehicle with this type of a connector. Okay, so the next thing that you're going to do is actually mark the plug wires where they are in conjunction with the cap. Now, it doesn't make a difference what number you put on the cap or the plug wire, just as long as if you write, like, for example, make this say number two, make sure that it says number two on the cap. Number one, number one on the cap. And the only reason is, is you're going to make sure these plug wires go to the correct position on the new distributor. Right, so now we're ready to take the distributor off and it's not very difficult to do. There's actually only three bolts that hold it on. They have 12 millimeter heads. Here's the top one, easy to see. Here's one down here, which is on the back side, and then there's one on this side over here. Again, there's so many videos on how to remove this distributor. I'm not really going to show you too much but the key points. So we're going to remove these two, but before I do that, I want to mark the mounting on the head of where this stuff is. And although I'm going to be putting a new distributor on and it's not going to have these marks, it's going to give me an idea, a reference of where it needs to be. So I don't have to worry about mechanical timing or anything like that. I can put it back pretty much where it was initially. Okay, so now that I've marked the front side and the back side of the distributor mounting, where the washers go, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this apart. We're gonna use a, a 12 millimeter fast acting. There's one. There's that one there. And finally the last bolt here. Now that we have all the bolts out, I'm going to remove the uh, corresponding wires. 
So now, whenever that's all loose, we just pull the distributor straight out with a little wiggle, and you can see, there you go. Now at this point, I want to make sure that I look at these lines and how they're lined up on the distributor so I can do the same with the new distributor when I put it back on. I'm talking about this line here and how it corresponds with these lines right here. So this line is on this side and this here. So let's get that new distributor and line it up the same way. All right, so you can see the new distributor. I've got the line right here lined up the same in correspondence with this here. So now all i got to do is put it back on with a slight little wiggle. Let's go ahead and just turn this around. And inside the distributor is where these dogs go into the cam to make sure that the timing's correct. We're just going to do a little wiggle while we're doing this. to make sure everything seats okay, just like that. Now, as far as the timing and the mechanical part of the timing, now I have to look at those marks and make sure that the distributor gets put in the same way at the same turn as the old one. Because right now, you can see I can make adjustments. And when I do this, it actually plays with the uh, mechanical timing of the whole thing. So. Let's go ahead and take a look here. All right, and I can see whenever I put the bolt in that it needs to be more to the left than the right. And I'm pretty close here. It's pretty darn close. So let's go ahead and run the rest of them in. Of course, the only way to ensure that you've got this correct is to go ahead and adjust your mechanical timing and tighten this down. You don't want to He-Man it too much because this is just cast aluminum and you're tightening it down in an aluminum head. So stripping is definitely a possibility or cracking. You don't want either one of those things to happen. All right, so now all i got to do is put all the plug wires back where they belong based on the numbers that I wrote on the boots and how they correspond with the cap. And then reconnecting the battery, plugging this back in, and firing it up and seeing how it runs. So let's go ahead and do all that, and I'll come back whenever it's running. All right, guys, so there you are. And it's been running for, oh, I don't know, about 45 minutes. The thermostat's open. Uh, the fan had kicked on already once and it's all cured. So basically, if you've got a problem with your car stalling and it's doing it randomly, but more importantly, if you can get it not to stall and a code comes up that says cylinder position sensor and the vehicle will run well at that point, it's because the computer is ignoring that sensor and is getting its information elsewhere. It's kind of like a partial limp mode that it goes into and it runs fine. So this is your fix. The link's gonna be down below for the distributor that I used in this video. So if you have that type of a plug and it's on a 99 Honda Civic, which is considered a tech distributor, this is the one you need. Click the link, it'll take you right to it and you can get it shipped to you in just a few days. I appreciate you watching. Thanks, bye.